What's up? What's up, Diva? So you already know what time it is. It is Wednesday, so that means it is Real Talk Wednesday. And before I even get this started, I have to show there's a little guest in the background who decided to just, you know, kick my door in, basically, and come in and take over. So we got back here. We got Tinky Man. Right, Tinky? Say hello to everyone. Say hi. Say hi. No, no, they see you now. Don't mess up the bed. Just come and say hello. So that is my grandson. Okay, you guys. So I had to get a little situated for this real talk. Have my grandson in the video. He loves to come and hang out with me. That is my buddy right there. You ever have a kid that's just like your buddy always? I mean, I have quite a few of them that are always my buddies. Um, but he just loved to be around me and vice versa. I love to be around his little crazy butt. I think he's crazy sometimes what I be saying to him. He's a little, he's just a little, I always, I call everybody, every single body a weirdo, okay? It don't matter who you are. You could be the age or two. I'd be like, oh, you're just a little weirdo. Because he just do the silliest things to me sometimes. And I just be like, look at your little weird butt. But that is my little sweetheart right there. So, yes, he will be two in January, and time flies, time flies, time flies. So, let's talk about some real talk. Um, I'm trying to think. I know there was something that I had to share with you guys that I cannot remember for the life of me what it is now. So, if it pops in my head, I will definitely let you guys know. But, in the meantime, I'm really not sure. Okay, so we do have to talk about weight loss journeying. So I have been every night except for tonight because I was super tired today. Um, the, I know it's not much, but it ain't much to me neither. But I guess it's a start. So I lost three pounds. Was it three? Two. I lost two pounds in a week. Whippity do. Like, yay, two pounds. I mean, I guess that is a start. You can't just, like, feel like, oh, I got to lose, like, 10 pounds. Because I would really love to lose, like, 10 freaking pounds at one jump. But it's not possible for me. I'm not really sure why. Unless I'm going to starve myself and I'm still not going to lose weight. I think it has a lot to do with I'm not eating properly. Meaning I'm not eating three good meals a day. And I just really, I'm, it seems like there's not enough time in one day for me. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that feels that way. So I do skip a lot of meals. And by the time I eat, it's like 8 o'clock at night. I'm eating broccoli. You know, wow. That's not really a lot. It's not really boosting my metabolism. And the way I, I lost weight the first time was I used my hydroxy cut. And I also drank Slim Fast for breakfast. And I made sure I had good meals a day. And I worked out. So that hurt, helped a lot. And the um, hydroxy cut really made me lose a lot of weight because it boosted my metabolism. So I was taking that like a few months back, like some months and months back. And it really did work, but I wasn't working out. But it worked still. So I haven't been taking it for like a month and and a half and I have to get back onto it because not only does it boost my metabolism, but it gives me energy like, you know, I'm not so sluggish because it has caffeine in it. There is some that there, there you can get the ones without the caffeine, but hell, if I'm going to fucking take some pills, I'm going to take some shit with some punch to it so that way my ass could be zing zinging all over this motherfucker, okay? So, yes, that is why, um, maybe that's why I be taking these naps lately. But also, I be working until like 2 in the morning, you know what I'm saying? When I say working, like I be sitting here editing videos and washing wigs and shit like that and making wigs so I work a lot and I barely get much rest so you know each day for me is a long one and today I was super tired so I didn't even get to go to the gym and I'm really disappointed about that because my day started off at being to the dentist with my two younger daughters at 8 a.m. Then I had to take one of them to school late, and the other one, she stayed home because she really wasn't feeling well. Then I had to, let's see, bring my daughter Tatiana to work at 10.30 a.m., and I had my grandson. And then I had to go to the car insurance place to change over my payment method. And then by 12.15 this afternoon, I had to bring my son Jalen, we call Wuzzle, to a job interview at Party City. Then, let's see, after that, we went to get a bite to lunch, 
and then I had to take my daughter that wasn't feeling too well that was with us. I had to take her to urgent care because we thought she had strep throat, but she has some kind of like virus, like a, like a cold, a bad cold. Um, and then by that time, you know, it was like 2.45 when I'm done. And I had to get Tati from work at 3 because she was getting off a little early today because at 3.30, it was parent-teacher's meeting, parent-teacher's meeting at Mumsy School. So Tati always likes to go because she helps her a lot with her homework. So she feels, you know, she has an input and she wants to know how her sister's doing. So, yes, by the time that was over, I was home at 4 o'clock and I was so tired. I, I sat down on the couch at like 4.45 and fell asleep. I, my day did not stop and I did not get to do anything that I wanted to do, which was make a wig. So, yeah, that's why I'm not going to the gym today. But I lost two pounds and I'm still at it. And that's all I had to share with you guys about that. So if you are doing the weight loss journey, let me know. What, how's your week? How was your past couple of weeks with weight loss? And that's about it. So other than that, I guess, you know, I do have, uh, let's see here. I want to send a special hello to one of my subscribers. And I think it's. Let me see. Chi Irie, but her YouTube name is And You Don't Stop Yo. And You Don't Stop Yo. So, oh my gosh, she's so pretty. She has been following me for years. And she actually, um, she says she loves my reviews. And she purchases a lot of good things that I recommend. And she loves it. Um, first of all, happy belated birthday because she turned 41 this past September 23rd. And she doesn't look a day over, like, 25. Seriously, she's beautiful. So she purchased some of my lipsticks, and she loves the website, Guru Glam, because um, they are just so courteous, and they're so professional. But I had to send her a special shout-out and some love, because, for one, I love hearing from my divas. Even if it's not even a real talk, you just want to stop by and say hello, because this is what this whole entire email was about. Just wanted to say hi. I love that, because... It makes my day and my week feel so productive, and it makes me feel like, you know what? I'm doing something for something. I might just be on YouTube talking shit and doing wig reviews and whatever kind of reviews, but I'm doing it for some reason, and everybody appreciates it. Or not everybody, because I got a lot of haters yet lately on, like, my videos, like, all these dislikes. But I don't really give a shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you're still watching it, so I don't give a fuck. But, okay, I love when you guys just, like, you know, come on and just send an email and be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, because... Hey, it don't have to be about some real talk shit. Just say hello. That's all. So I had to send her a special shout out and say happy belated birthday. And thank you for purchasing my lipstick line. I really appreciate that. I truly appreciate it. People don't realize, like, there are so many YouTubers who, who have businesses of their own. And they sell products or they have a, um, a collaboration with a makeup line or hairline, whatever. And... Some don't really care if you purchase or not. They're not too appreciative. Me, I just want to say, and I'm not saying they're not, okay? But I just want to let you guys know whether you're buying some synthetic wigs for me, some lipstick line for me, some regular wigs for me. Listen. Listen, Linda, listen, okay? I want y'all to know that I appreciate it all. For real, for real. As I bust my ass, some people think that a lot of YouTubers got all this money, we got all this fame. Nah, bitches, it ain't even like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, first of all, this is my third channel, so I don't, I don't, I ain't rolling in nobody's cash, okay? I would like to take my clothes off and roll in a whole bunch of cash, but a bitch over here is not doing that. You know what I'm saying? I bust my ass for everything I get, and I'm proud of that too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm also very humble and I'm very appreciative for anybody that buys and purchases or supports me in any way. So I want to tell you guys thank you for everything, every single thing that you guys done for me. So, yes, special shout out to And You Don't Stop Yo Girl. I read your email, sweetheart, and thank you so much for just coming by and following me and just telling me hello and all your love and support. And thank you to everybody for all your love and support. So, with further ado, it's time to get on some real talk and hash out some bullshit like we do. Okay. Check out my new videos. They got some pink and blue hair. 
heart. Mm. But yes, yeah, better check them out. I'll post them down below if I don't forget. If I forget, just go to the channel and check them out. Because they just recent. They today and yesterday. So yeah, I'll see them. If you guys need a real talk about you or somebody you know, you want to talk some shit about somebody y'all know, then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk. And if you are willing to change the names of your characters in this email, please go ahead and do so and let me know in that email. Or otherwise, I will sit there and make up some shit for your asses. So, yes, you guys. Yas, hunties. On that note, let's get this real talk going, okay? So, this one here is Real Talk Urgent. Hi, April. I have changed all the names in this story. Sorry, sorry, this is kind of long. It's not really that long. My name is Tiana. I have a best friend that I consider my sister, and we have known each other for over 17 years. I will name her Brittany. Brittany recently moved three hours away, and we see each other time to time. Brittany is 29 and has never had a boyfriend, never been on a date, and we used to always talk about how we would, how we couldn't find a good man or girl talk like that. I have had my share of niggas that ain't shit and can tell bullshit a mile away. Brittany recently met this guy at a supermarket, and he is from Brazil and is not an American citizen. She and him fell in love within two weeks of dating. Her mom and I went to her city to meet the guy. And he was cool and her mom is being a dumbass and not telling her to slow down and to get to know him and instead gave him permission to date her when he asked. But I'm not convinced that he is all that he says. I have had relationships where I have dated men for years and all that shit went to hell after we got out of that cupcake stage. And she swears she knows him and trusts him. And they're not in that stage anymore. But you can't tell her anything. April. They have known each other less than four months. And two of these months, he has been in Brazil because his visa expired. I told her she is getting... <clears throat> excuse me. I told her she is settling because she went so long without a man and the first man that gives her attention is the one she is holding on to. I get that we all get lonely, but I think she is settling. They have started discussing marriage and kids and she swears he doesn't want a green card because he doesn't want to live in the States. At first, I told her how I felt and that I think she is dumb for being reckless, especially at our age. Every time I talk to her about her relationship, she makes an excuse and brushes it off. She even told me that if I had a man, I wouldn't be worried about her, so I backed off and stopped trying to help her see the light. Now, this is why it's urgent. This man has bought her a ticket to Brazil to visit him in a few months. She is going regardless of the fact that she doesn't know him. Know him or no one will be able to get her if she gets hurt or know where she is staying. April, she and I have had many conversations about it and she won't listen. And I stopped trying when she got slick in the mouth and told me I wouldn't be worried about her if I had a man. And yes, I'm single and I don't want a man right now because I just got out of a relationship that was draining and I needed time before my next one. Um, and I'm enjoying the single life, but she is my sister and part of me can't let go because I don't want her hurt. April, what should I do or say? Or should I just leave it alone and let her do her? I know you will keep it real with me. Thank you, Tiana. Sorry if I have any typos. I was typing super fast. Well, sweetheart, you didn't type too fast because there was no typos. And let's see, Tiana. So your friend's name is Brittany. So, okay. So you, you guys get the message. It's simple. It's simple and easy. Tiana's best friend, Brittany, Never had a boyfriend, never had a relationship, don't have any children. That's fine. It's understandable. Some people start like start late in life. You know what I'm saying? But Brittany moved three hours away from Tiana. So she's been kind of like on her own. You know what I'm saying? Lonely. And Brittany met a man at a grocery store, a Brazilian man. So they've been dating four months. Two of these four months, he ain't been around. The nigga been in Brazil, okay? Because his visa expired. However, Brittany is falling head over heels for him. 
discussing marriage, children, moving in with each other, dogs, house, picket fence, probably bank accounts for all we fucking know. And she's really trying to warn her friend, but her friend has basically told her, well, if you had a man, you would basically be in my motherfucking business. That's just basically what she said. You know, if you had a man, you wouldn't be worried about me. You find yourself something to do. And she keeps trying to tell her, but, you know, it is what it is. So listen, here's my thing. You could tell somebody something until you blew in the face, until they blew in the face. If that girl is going to go to Brazil, there ain't nothing you can do to stop her. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was in a bad relationship, this was before my husband, and my friends would tell me, my cousins would tell me, and I just would like, you know, yeah, you're right, you're right. But I didn't leave until I was ready to leave. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes some people just need to go through a whole lot just to be able to realize that what they're in is not healthy for them. It's toxic. So regardless of if you tell her, listen, girl, he's not the one for you. Y'all only been together for four months. Why are you going to Brazil? It's not going to help. She still made her mind up. She's 29 years old. She's a grown ass woman. She doesn't feel like she needs to listen to anybody but her heart at this moment in time. And yeah, I get it too. You're right. Um, Tiana, we all do get lonely and some people take it to the extreme to where they are just looking for happiness. And sometimes when you look for happiness, you look in the wrong fucking places. And it seems like he has pegged her to be his target. Of course, he's going to tell her he don't want to be in the United States. Why would the fuck he come out and outright say, yeah, I want to be a United States citizen. So I want to knock you up, get you pregnant, marry you and then ditch you. Of course, he wants to get um, of course, he wants to be a citizen. I'm not really sure about his true intentions, but. You know, you, you're in Brazil, you're in Brazil now. What are your real intentions? So he's in Brazil. He's been there for two months. I've seen those Brazilian women. They are badass. A lot of them are badass. Okay. Why do you think they call that butt lift after them? Them bitches is bad the fuck ass. Okay. Hmm. But I'm not saying he's cheating on her, but I can't even say he's thousands of miles away because I'm thousands of miles away from New York. This nigga is up days the fuck away, okay? Days the fuck away. We can't even say thousands of miles. We're going to say days the fuck away. And, okay, so what? We got great conversations. Is she texting him or are they on the phone? Because I'm pretty sure that would be pretty damn expensive to be talking to somebody in Brazil all the time. But all of this talk about being married and having kids, I think a lot of times people do that in the beginning of a relationship because they really don't know one another. And it's like when they get to know each other, then it's like, nigga, I cannot stand your fucking black ass. You know what I'm saying? I don't call them the cupcake stages. I call them the representative stages because everybody you meet is their representative. Because if you meet me as if you were a guy, I would be the nicest person in the world. I'm not going to come off as a bitch to you or I'm set in my ways or I like this this way and I like that this way and that and that and that. You give me a couple days and I'll let you see the real side of me. I don't go on for too long being my representative because I just can't. You know what I'm saying? The real me is going to eventually come out. And yes, I'm a nice person all around, but I'm not going to be so nicey-nicey to you throughout everything. I'm just going to be myself and that's what the fuck I'm going to be. And then I guess for me, it is a representative because if I was truly, truly myself when I first met a dude, that, then that nigga would run for the door as soon as he see me. He would be like, oh shit, this that fucking evil bitch right there. I'm running for the door. So it's the representative stage that you see. That's what I call it. And sometimes that shit will last a good few few months and took up to a couple of years shit it all depends on the circumstance in the relationship but you know what with your friend that is your friend and you love her to death and i totally get it i truly understand you know what i'm saying i've had friends like that and i've had re relatives that have gone through things and i have said to them over and over and over again like this is not good for you leave that person alone why are you still with them and you know what that shit becomes a burden to you because it's like oh my god how many fucking times am i gonna tell this bitch oh my god why don't she just get it and it just puts you in a state of mind like you constantly worried about that person and you constantly like you know what i'm saying like um oh that's my son i'm sorry 
that's my son texting me. I'm from New York because he just met. Just let me know he's okay because he had he just went through some shit in court. Um, and I wanted to make sure his ass was not arrested. Okay, he said he's gonna call me tomorrow. I love you too. But sometimes when you have friends in relationships like that or relatives, that shit puts you in another state in your mind. Like, yo, I'm constantly worried about this person. What are they going through? And you and, and you know what? Your whole point is just to make them realize and understand. Like, listen, I'm not telling you this because I don't have a man. I'm not telling you this because I'm hating. I'm not telling you this because I'm lonely or bored or any of that. I'm telling you because I know from personal experience. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to tell you because I don't want you to go through the same dumb shit that I have went through or somebody else has went through. So Tiana, your friend Brittany, you have told her over and over and over again about the situation. And I get it. You, me personally, I would, you know, some people, you say things to them and some people sugarcoat shit, you know, like, oh, you know, I really don't think you should go and do this. And, um, now, now my daughter Tati is texting me talking about they going to the buffet and do I want anything? What the fuck? Hold on. I mean, I had everybody just disrupt, um, fucking with me. They go in a buffet, Lynn's buffet. I'm like, okay, do I want anything? How the fuck are you going to text me and ask me, do I want anything from the buffet? I'm like, okay, how are y'all getting there? Um, we take, we taking Uber, okay? So it's Lyft. They taking Lyft, which is Uber. Um, before that video ends, um, hopefully I don't forget, but I'm going to put my Lyft code so you guys can get a free ride, okay? So I have promotions on my Lyft thing. I have a car, but I still... I download anything. So uh, I'm going to put my Lyft code in the box and you can use it. Click on it and you'll use my promotional code. You got to download the app. It's just like Uber, but it's cheaper than Uber. And, you know, you'll get a free ride with my Lyft code. So go ahead and use it. And if you get a free ride, then I'll get a free ride. Even though I don't take the cab anywhere, but my daughters do. So whatever. Um, when I'm not around or available. But anyway, like I was saying, like I was saying, yes, the lift, the lift information, if you guys want a free lift ride or a discount, will be in the description box. I'll put that for you guys. So, and if I don't, just somebody remind me in the video, okay? So, like I was saying, um, some people, you got to tell them, you, you tell them, you be like, oh, you know, I understand you're going through shit. And if some people, I'm not, you know what? I could sugarcoat shit for some people, but that those people have to be like in a certain age bracket. Like your ass got to be like nine and or six and two and shit like that. But when you're a grown ass person and you're doing some shit that I think is fuckery, fuckery, okay, you're doing some real fuckery shit. I will let you know straight off. Like, listen, bitch, you. I understand that's your man and everything. You you happy go lucky. That's good and everything. And yeah, that's right. I don't have a motherfucking man. Okay, and that's just like how I tell y'all. So I'm gonna just be me right now, and I'm gonna just tell Brittany. Like, on some real shit, I understand that you in love, you got a relationship, and you care for him, he like you, whatever. But you need to get to know a person, because somebody can tell you something until your eyes and neck and fingers and breath and face turn blue. Sometimes people tell you shit that they feel like you want to hear that shit, okay? So it's cool. I'm happy for you that you found yourself someone. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I'm totally happy for you. However, I think you're moving a little bit too fast, and I really don't feel like your ass needs to go to a foreign country because you don't know anybody over there. You don't know what he's capable of doing. You don't know what his family is capable of doing. There have been all types of movies and shit on the news about people going to foreign countries, getting fucking raped, getting taken for drug trafficking or sex trafficking, all kind of shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So she is setting herself up for a world of problems and trouble. And maybe you need to come at her on some real shit. Or better yet, Tiana, let her watch this motherfucking video and she can see that it's not all fun and games. Yeah, dick is good. You get the vitamin D. You want to be in a relationship. Everybody wants to be in a fucking relationship. Who don't want to be in a relationship? I have never met anybody that don't want to be in a motherfucking relationship unless her ass is a nun, okay? And they even in a relationship with God. So everybody is in a relationship, okay? But some people need to realize what's healthy and what's not healthy. And just because we tell you something for your own motherfucking good does not mean we hating, we bored, we jealous because we don't got a man. It's because people can't about you okay and they want the best for you but 
there comes a time in our lives, in our friendship, where it's like, you know what? I keep telling this motherfucker and they not listening to me. And I'm telling them them all day, every day, but they still constantly thinking that I'm hating. And there are some people that, you know what? You got to just leave them the fuck alone and let them learn the hard way. And then they're going to come back and they probably still won't say to you, you know what? You was right. You was right. I should listen to you because some people got that pride issue. But some people, you just got to leave them the fuck alone and let them learn shit the hard way. And it hurts and it's so hard and it's disheartening and it's hurtful to be able to let these people just learn the hard way because you really want the best for them. But they are stuck and they kind of like seem like they hypnotized by the dick or just by the motherfucker and his 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 whole aura in general. So what do you do, Tiana, about Brittany? If you really care about her and she's your friend. Don't sugarcoat no shit for her. The same way that I just came at you guys blunt, because this is me caring about Tiana, I mean, Brittany, is the same way you need to come at her. And maybe you need to let her fucking watch the video. Some people think that the world is a pot of gold out there and that nothing's going to fucking happen to them and that everything that they hear is truth. Always, you know what I'm saying? Just like y'all motherfuckers watch all these YouTubers and then, oh yeah, I live this great honky dory life, or you just think that it's truth, it's truth, or whatever they're trying to sell you is truth, truth, truth. I'm gonna tell y'all what, I'm not gonna sell y'all no bullshit because I don't have time for it, all right? I'm not gonna sit up here and lie about no shit. If I don't like the shit, I don't motherfucking like it. Bottom line. And if the company don't like the fact that I said that I don't like it, then you know what? Oh, well, I just don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Don't send me nothing else. I don't care. Because nine times out of ten, like I say all the time, if I don't like the one thing you sent me, I don't want you to send me nothing else. If you send me some bullshit hair, I don't want you to send me no more hair because I don't like it because it's garbage and I don't want anything. Garbage, I don't, I don't have any room for garbage in my house. And I don't feel like I need to take the time out to do another video to rectify some other shit that you sent me. I got enough videos to do. I don't got time to go back and be like, well, I'm going to give it another chance. Nah, I don't have time for that shit. I don't. And that's it. It's just how it is. Because if I don't like it, I just don't motherfucking like it. And that just goes with people. Some people, they feel like everything you hear, they hear is truth, truth, truth. And it don't even be like that. You know what I'm saying? They got to learn the hard way. And I would hate for you to have to let your friend learn the hard way by letting her go to Brazil and something happened to her. So if you have any information T um Tiana on him, meaning his full name, anything, I would look his ass up and find out as much as I could about him. Because if they want to get married and have kids but he don't want to live in the States, what the fuck? She's supposed to live in Brazil now? Bitches be tripping when they be moving out of country for motherfuckers, okay? I'm sorry, but the United States may not be the best world in, in this place. It, it bless, bless, the United States may not be the ble best place in this world, you know? Who knows who's about to be president? I'm going to just be honest and tell y'all I don't like Trump and I don't like Hillary. A bitch is ready to move to Canada. And I just said bitches be moving out of state for motherfuckers, out of country for motherfuckers. But I'm not moving out of the country for no man. I'm moving out of the country because I'm just like, listen, I think my black ass is gonna move to Canada because it's beautiful there people are friendly it's free health care there's a whole lot of everything and it's just fucking beautiful there and it ain't that far you know what I'm saying so listen but I'm not about to move to Brazil for no motherfucker or China or nowhere like that United Kingdom nah I'm not I'm not doing that for no motherfucker because I got family here and I'm not trying to make my way back the hard way you know what I'm saying at least if a bitch moved to Canada, it's just right there. I could drive back over to the States. It might take me some motherfucking days, but shit, a bitch already used to that, okay? But moving to Brazil for some motherfucker, you crazy. I said, I said the bitches was nice looking over there. I didn't say go live the fuck over there, all right? I'm sorry, but I'm not moving to some foreign country where I don't um, know what the fuck they saying, okay? If you ain't speaking my language, I'm not fucking moving there. But I would hate for you to have to let her go. So maybe you should email her the link to this video and let her watch the shit. Just be like, girl, you should watch her. She is so funny. She be telling people like it is if she don't watch me already. Tell her that shit. Email her the link or text her the link and see what she say. Let her watch that shit. You know what I'm saying? On some real shit. It's a foreign country. 
Now she want to go visit. Yeah, that's nice. But you know what? Get to know him. And get to know him means get to fucking know him. Not jump on a plane four months into a relationship, which is really two. Let her tell her, you know, you guys have been together for four years, four months, but you're not really been together for four months. Two of those months, he's in a foreign country. Think about that. Let Tiana know what you would do in this situation. If this was your friend, how would you deal with it? I would just hit her with some real hard bullshit. I'm, that's just me. I have no holes barred. And bitch, if you don't want to be my friend afterwards, that's cool. I'm cool with that too. But I'm going to let you know. Next scenario. Real talk. Husband has a POF account. Ain't this some bullshit? Hi, April. Let me start by saying I love your videos. You can call me Maya and my husband, Frank. I'm 28 and he is 32. We have no children and we have been married for three and a half years. And let me just say that my husband's phone has been locked our whole marriage. And I don't know the password nor access to his phone at all. I asked him why he has his phone locked, and he said that there are things on his phone that I would be upset about, which leads me to the reason I need your advice. My husband had left his phone in the kitchen, and I went to the kitchen to fix something to eat. His phone light had flashed because he had gotten a notification. So, of course, I looked to see what it was, and it says, P-O-F, plenty of fish. Mama Jojo wants to meet with, up with you. Mm. So I get pissed, but I don't say anything. I just make my food and go back to the living room, of course. My blood, my blood is boiling, and my husband could tell something was wrong with me. And he kept asking if I was okay. I said, yeah, and brushed it off. So later that night, we go out for ice cream, and I asked him if he loved me. He said yes, and then I asked him if he wanted to tell me something. He said no, and I wanted to know and wanted to know why I, why I had asked him. I said no reason, just wanted to know, but at this point, I can't keep it in. I asked him why the hell he has a POF account. Girl, he looked like he had saw a ghost. I said, yep, I saw the notification on your phone. He says that he had had downloaded the app but hasn't used it. And he said he downloaded a lot of apps to his phone. April, he must think I'm a fool. Why have the app on your phone if you're not using it? If he is a married man, he shouldn't have an app like POF on his phone in the first place. He said that he was going to delete it and that he apologized for having it on his phone. I told him if he wanted to be with someone else, then they can have him because I'm not an ugly woman and I can get a man if I want one. I'd rather he leave them to waste. I'd rather him leave than to waste my time by cheating and lying. What do you think I should do? P.S. There is a lot more shit he has done, but that would take up a whole real talk video. By the way, he is an African and I'm a black American woman. Thanks for your time. Sorry for any misspelled words. I'm typing on my phone. Thanks. Everybody's always apologizing. Mm. Let me tell y'all something, okay, about this email. First of all, when I had that motherfucker living, I just got rid of back in, when was it, May? April, May, June, July, August, five months ago. Ooh, five months ago, like six months ago, whatever. Has it been that long, y'all? April, June, um, in May, June, July, August, September, wait, June, May, May, June, July, August, September, five months. Ooh, child, yes, hunties, yes, yes. Okay, I just had to do that. All right. Let me tell y'all. I think it was like a month before um, his ass got put the fuck out in handcuffs. Maybe it wasn't even a full month. Anyway, it might have been. I'm on my phone. And I get an email notification from, just an email, from Match.com. Now, mind you, I had the Match.com account way before I was even messing with him when I first came here. So... I never paid for it. It was a free one. I told y'all that. It was a free one. So I couldn't even check any emails when, when men send me messages. I couldn't even check those. It was like, wow, what a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want somebody to pay for some shit because I have POF too. So, okay. So I get an email, right? And it told me that there was new people that joined Match. You know what I'm saying? And it will show the picture of these new guys that joined Match. So I'm looking through the pictures because you can see the pictures of people that joined 
but you cannot see you can see their profile but you cannot message them okay so while i'm looking through the pictures can y'all please tell me why this motherfucker's picture popped the fuck up oh dude yes oh dude jamel's photo popped up i was like Oh, word, his name is Black on here, spelled with two Ks. So whatever, he was upstairs and he was sleeping on the couch, I mean on the bed. It was in the afternoon, you know what I'm saying? So I just sat there on the edge of the I just stood over him, not a matter of fact, while he was sleeping. Just stood over him for like five minutes straight. He was sleeping. He woke up and got startled because my ass was just standing over him. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, nothing. What you doing? So I started bringing up a scenario to him about somebody in a real talk video that had um, asked me about some internet dating and what would they do? Did this nigga say, oh, um, yeah, I wouldn't deal with that. So basically, I just like really black with two Ks. Do you know his face turned fucking damn near white and he was dark skinned? The nigga tried to tell me the same dumb shit. How he didn't want the app on his phone and all these pop-ups kept popping up and he didn't know he accidentally downloaded the app from from um from match.com and shit. And then he tried to say that he was trying to see if I was on there. All of this bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, whatever. Right, yeah, right. Let me tell you something, okay, sweetheart? Niggas be lying, okay? This motherfucker, Maya, is a liar. He gonna say that he didn't, um, he wasn't, he didn't mean to, he meant to delete the app, all this shit. Nigga, what you fucking download the shit for in the first place? Let me tell you something. I know for a fact when I download an app, I know what app it is and what it does. And I'm not just gonna go and click random apps that I don't know what they do and just click install on my phone. Why the fuck would I do that, okay? Nine times, ten times out of ten, when you download a motherfucking app, you know what the app is about. If you stumble across the app, you're of course going to read it to see what it's about before you decide to install the shit on your phone because don't nobody want no shit on their phone that they not gonna fucking use so don't let that nigga frank lie to you okay about oh he was gonna down he was gonna delete it and there's plenty of other apps that he meant to delete but he didn't get around to it and he apologized and the reason why his phone is locked because he don't want you to look into his phone because you would be upset that right there would have been a red flag to me so if you lock your phone because you know for a fact that there's something in there that it will upset me why the fuck is you telling me that and on top of that Maya why the fuck is you listening to that shit if that nigga told you and I motherfucking quote he said that there are things on his phone that I would be upset about which leads me to the reason I need your advice if a motherfucker told me that they lock their phone because there's shit on there that a bitch like me would be upset about you know what I think I would hit him upside his goddamn dome piece with the fucking phone. I'm not about to sit here in your face every day while you got a locked fucking screen on your phone because you got some shit up there that will upset me. That is just lying and doing some conniving dumb shit to me in my face. And me being a fool, you think I'm about to sit here and go for that shit? I wish a motherfucker would tell me that they lock their phone because they don't want me to see what's in it because I'm going to get mad. That right there is suspect. That right there tells you that there's some bullshit going on in your relationship and your marriage. And y'all been married for three and a half years and y'all um, ain't got no kids and he's an African. Let me tell you something. Count your blessings that you ain't got no kids with this motherfucker and call it a quits because this nigga is cheating on you from left to right and left field, okay? And bitch, do a 360 turn around, spin your motherfucking chair and whip your hair back, okay? Back and forth because this nigga is cheating on you like there ain't no tomorrow. He talking about he ain't never used the app, but Mama Jama, whatever her motherfucking name, talk about she want to meet up with you. Really, though? If he ain't never used that app, if that nigga never used the POF app, okay, okay, because, okay, listen, I can give him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not going to because I'm going to show you something. So I, I download the POF app, but I never opened it. So, so now it's just lingering on my phone. I never made an account. I just got the app on my phone.
Okay, so if I never got, never made an account, I just got the app on my phone, which means I never used it. Like he said, I never used it. I, I meant to delete it because I didn't know what it was, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then you shouldn't get no notifications from POF. Nobody should be wanting to meet up with you because if you if you never never use the app, then Mama Jama should never be asking you to meet up because if you never met, use the app, means you don't have a profile. Okay. If you just deleted it by accident, then you shouldn't get any notifications of somebody saying they want to meet up with you. Because just because you download the app doesn't mean automatically you get a profile made for you. Some spiritually, you get pictures sucked into your app and all this shit. That nigga is lying to you like nobody's business. Let me tell you something. If I had some vodka, I'd go downstairs right now and make me a motherfucking drink for you and me and drink two of them, okay? Right here on camera. Let me tell you something. First of all, he lying. Second of all, he playing you. Third of all, he's a sneaky ass. Fourth of all, y'all been married. I hope he has his motherfucking green card before y'all got married because you did say he's from Africa. Because I'm, first of all, I am tired. I am so sick and tired of men in general being sorry and using women. But for you to use somebody for a motherfucking green card is a whole different ball game. Now, I don't know nothing about no African man. Honestly, I've had some that try to talk to me, but I just am not interested in African men. And if there's anybody that's African and is watching me, please don't take that as a disrespect because it's not intended to. We each have our own um, preferences, and they just weren't my preference. Um, but I would hope that he has a green card because if he doesn't, then he's using you. And two... If he got shit in his phone that he knows is going to upset you, then he needs to get that shit straightened out. You know what I'm saying? There's no way in God's green earth that I'm going to let you belittle me on any type of fucking social media, dating website. Even and when I say belittle me means that you're meeting up with other women and you're telling them otherwise. You're disrespecting me. That's belittling me. Okay, on top of that, I am not about to allow you to have your phone locked and tell me that you have it locked because there are things in there that will upset me. What type of things? Because now you need to get to the sources and the bottom of this. What motherfucking type of things is in his goddamn phone that is going to upset you? And you need to make that very clear to him and let this motherfucker know what secrets are you keeping from me because I know that you joined POF, okay? You know what I would do? I would go and install that app on my motherfucking phone and um, try to see if you can find him, okay? Install it under another name, under a different photo. Take a random picture off the web and use it and see what he fucking says, okay? Hold on. I just want to make sure my mic is still on. Because if this stupid mic turns off, then I'll be talking for nothing. It runs on a battery, which pisses me off. But anyway... Yes, I would do that. But second of all, I wouldn't even bother doing that because you know what? I'm not about to go through no dumb shit and do a whole bunch of shit for you. If you can't be real, if you can't be honest and truthful, then there's no need for any of us to be in this relationship. If you have things that are hiding on your phone and you feel that they are going to disturb me as a person, then you know what? There's no need for us to be as one. I'm not about to be with anybody in a relationship that is hiding anything from me. And that's just point blank, period. If he got shit on his phone that it's going to upset you, I guarantee you it has to do with some other fucking female. Okay? Now he got POF. He, this nigga probably got Match.com too. Who even fucking knows? But POF, I'm sorry, but POF be about some sleaze balls. I mean, I'm wrong in some aspects because some women have met really great guys on there. I wish I would, okay? I have given up the whole dating scene. I wish I would have. Well, listen, I ain't going to. I have. I have because I, I I haven't paid for my, my subscription anymore at Match.com. I don't feel like I need to. I'm, I'm gonna, if I got to pay for something, then I'm not. And I haven't gotten anything out of it, then I'm, I'm not going to use it. But I don't know what the fuck is going on with Match.com. I keep getting the same person emailing me, but I can't read the email and I'm not about to pay for it. Oh, but did a bitch get an email today from POF that tomorrow is free? Tomorrow night is free, only for a few hours. Oh, yes, a bitch will go and read those emails within those few hours. And if he looks promising, which he probably won't be because I am so 
I just don't really trust nobody. Then maybe I'll message him back, but I'm not about to pay for that shit. I am not about to pay for that shit, okay? But listen, anyway, if he has shit on his phone, then you know what? And he already told you. It would be one thing if he said, well, I lock my phone because I have personal, uh, my personal things on it, like my social or my financial stuff. If he would have said something like that, then I would have been like, oh, okay, you know. But he didn't even, he didn't even say that shit. He fucking made, he said, oh, I got some shit on there that make you upset. I think I would have slapped his fucking teeth out of his mouth. Diva, what you need to do is investigate his ass and try to see who he's, um, he's with however i wouldn't even take too much time out of investigating that motherfucker because if you want to be sneaky and you want to lock your phone and you got shit on your phone that upsets me then he's not the dumb one maya you are because you are allowing this and the first time somebody would tell me some shit like that goodbye felicia bye felicia bye bye felicia poof bye felicia okay Mm-hmm. Bye, Frank. Bye. Bye, Frank. He be by. Ghost out the motherfucking door. He ain't about to sit up in my face and in my house and have your phone locked because there's shit on there that would upset me. What type of shit? So now what you need to do, Maya, is go to this motherfucker and be like, so I recall when you said there your phone is locked because of these reasons. What type of stuff is going to make me upset, Frank? Because I see you got POF. You're trying to tell me that you never use the app. However, if you never use the app, why you got a profile? Because obviously you have a profile if you got people talking about they want to meet up with you. Give it to him raw like that. The nigga probably be stuck in his own shit and won't know what the fuck to say. I'm just saying. That would be Okay, me. you guys. So this is going to be the last one of the night because this is three. I didn't do three last night. And this one is marked urgent. Okay? So hopefully my memory card does not cut the fuck off in, during this video. If it does, then I'll just have to switch it up. Hi, April. I want to start off by saying that I have been a loyal subscriber for years, and I love how real you are and the wise advice you give. I already changed the name so you can call me Julie. I'm 22 and writing all the way from Milan, Italy. In March of this year, I started dating Peter, a single 37-year-old U.S. Army warrant officer on duty for six months in my country. We immediately hit it off and I fell in love with him fairly quickly. I really thought he was the love of my life and the man of my life. I could picture a future with him and my feelings for him grew stronger every day. Everything seemed so perfect for the first time in my life. I felt loved. It all happened so fast. Fast forward to August, I find out I am pregnant. It was a shock at first because I'm still young and I'm trying to get my life together. But I was happy to start my own family with Peter. He seemed ecstatic. We immediately decided to keep the baby and he said he was so happy that he could not wait to hold him or her in his arms and finally start a family with me. The woman he's in love with. Early September, he went back to the U.S. He stationed in Fort Drum, New York. Since his time in Italy was up, but he kept in contact every day, and all we did was talk about the baby for hours on end and our future together, how we missed each other and how we wanted and couldn't wait to meet and finally reunite again. We even discussed me moving out there and getting married to make things easier for both me and him. And even though I was hesitant to make such a big move, I was happy and already started to and ready to start this new journey with the love of my life and my baby. Even if that meant moving in a completely different continent and leaving all I have here behind. Unfortunately, my dreams have shattered. On September 20th, I got a message on Facebook from a girl I didn't know who told me her best friend, Felicia, Felicia was pregnant with Peter's child. And that I needed to back off because due to the stress Peter caused her by dating me, she ended up in a hospital. By the way, Felicia doesn't know I'm also pregnant and didn't realize she was the side chick. I didn't even have a chance to message her back to tell her because she deactivated her account soon after. I was in disbelief. I immediately contacted Peter and he admitted that he had been seeing Felicia for the last four months of our relationship and that now she's claiming she's pregnant with his child, but he doesn't believe it's his and cut all contacts with her because he says he doesn't care about her that way. He said that he's sorry and that he loves me and he wants to be with me and raise our child together, but I completely lost all trust in him because I feel I've been living a lie all this time. My baby is my priority, and I want the best for him or her, and I am certainly not happy about the drama surrounding Peter and Felicia, but I do still love him. 
I thought about trying to work things out, but I'm afraid I will never be able to forgive him, especially if Felicia's child turns out to actually be his. I'm currently 11 weeks pregnant. The side chick is only a couple weeks ahead of me, and I already love my baby so much, and I want to give him or her the love and family I have never had. Please, please, April, help me. I don't know what to do, and I think you're a very wise and experienced woman, and not to mention an amazing mother, and I really trust your advice. Sorry for the lengthy email, but it's fucked up situation. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'm sending all my love from Italy. I'll attach a picture of myself. First of all, she's fucking beautiful. Like, wow. She's fucking beautiful. She's gorgeous. She's freaking beautiful. Like, wow. Oh, man, 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 man. So let's see. I think she changed the name. Julie. So Julie is 20, 22, and she met Peter, who's 37, who is a warrant officer in the Army, U.S. Army, who was stationed in Italy for six months. Italy in the house, because that's where my dad's father is from. My grandfather is from Italy, because uh, he's Italian, of course. So anyway... So she she met up with this dude. She met up with him, fell in love. He was there six months. He's 37. She's 22. And she got pregnant. Motherfucker is back in the U.S. And they communicate with each other by phone, talking for hours and hours about their future. He's talking about how he wants her to move there, raise their family together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then she's getting a message on Facebook from some other random bitch that, you know, Felicia is pregnant. Some bitch named Felicia by Felicia is pregnant, okay, by Peter. And he is admitting that he has messed with her in the last four months of their relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And he doesn't believe that that's his baby that the girl's carrying. First of all, you wouldn't have to say you didn't believe it if you wasn't fucking around. Second of all, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Julia. And I've seen many things like this and um, stories um, and, and movies and real life stories on like those investigation discovery channels with, you know, with women. They meet these men that come from other countries, meaning that they're stationed from in the army and you know what I'm saying? And they meet up with these guys and they promised in the world and all of this shit. And it's easy for a foreign woman like yourself to grasp excuse me, and to hold on to because a lot of these countries don't have a lot of things, you know what I'm saying, going for themselves, or a lot of these countries are poor, or it just, it could be all types of things, not Italy, but what I'm saying is these men, they station in these foreign countries during this time period, and they just want to feel love, that they want to be in a relationship because they want to have something to do. So I'm not saying that Peter might be lying to you, however... I wouldn't trust anything that he says because I've seen this many a times, okay? I've read about this many a times where men that are stationed in foreign countries shack up with these foreign women just for the time being and they promise in the world, promise them that they are going to be with them, they're going to have a family with them, they're going to send them money, they're going to take care of them, etc., etc., etc. They're going to leave their wives in America for them and none of that shit takes place. None of that shit happens. None of the shit. It's nothing but a bunch of broken promises and dreams that fucks you up mentally and emotionally and physically, okay? So now you got this baby on the way, and Peter is talking about how he wants to be with you. He's apologized, all that shit. Yeah, it's great. Apologize, UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. But sorry really ain't going to make up for the fact that you've been cheating on me and I'm carrying your baby, and you've been living a bunch of lies because... Though he might not say he's living a bunch of lies, that motherfucker's living a bunch of lies. And I say he's living a bunch of lies because he's been cheating on you for four months. He had to tell you something, the reason why he wasn't around, he's been living a lie. He ain't been honest with you. That's living a motherfucking lie. He's been cheating on you. That's living a motherfucking lie. He's been covering that shit up because he's been living a motherfucking lie. Okay? So, me personally, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't move to nobody's foreign country off of a lie. And to me, honestly, everything he has to say is off of a lie. Now, here's the thing. Don't go across the country. Like I just said, bitches be moving across country for some niggas and to another country. Don't move to somewhere where you have nobody, have nothing, okay? You have this baby in your belly, and you got this man, Peter, 
who you really don't really know much about. Yeah, you guys have had a relationship for six months of his station. And yeah, now you're pregnant by him. You don't really know him like that. You don't really know him as a person like that. He had his representative around you for six motherfucking months, okay? Trust and believe what I'm telling you that. He don't know you, and you really don't know him like that. So why really trust the motherfucker like that? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Um... It's hard and it's disheartening because you have a baby and you wasn't prepared to be pregnant and shit happens. Shit happens. It's life. However, I wouldn't go changing up my life for somebody that I barely know that lives days the fuck away. You know what I'm saying? He lives days away from you. I wouldn't go changing up my life. You have family and you have everything that you have in your country. Don't go fucking it up. Don't go changing it up for somebody who hasn't changed up anything for you. Meaning, he ain't changed up his cheating ass ways. He's still doing what the fuck he's still doing. You know what I'm saying? He apologized, but trust and believe me when I tell you that was not a sincere apology. You are a beautiful girl. You are about to have a beautiful baby. Take care of your baby and yourself. Don't let no man stress you out. Okay, especially in your time of need of pregnancy. Don't let no man stress you the fuck out in general. But definitely when you're pregnant, don't let no man stress you the fuck out. I'm sorry, but even if I was pregnant to somebody, I'm not about to let you stress me out. And the fact that you got some next bitch um, sending me messages, for all you know, that could have been him because the account is deactivated now. That could have been his way of trying to get wean out of the relationship so you can get mad because he was cheating on you. What I would really do is I would find out who he really is. If you got to go through the army and find out some shit and go to where he was stationed at and let them know, hey, listen, I've been pregnant by this person and et cetera, et cetera. Because the reason why I'm telling you to go to where he was stationed at and maybe speak to somebody is because, for one, the army be real, real, real strict about their men cheating on women that are wives that they have. They There's a lot of shit that's behind that. They don't really like to see families broken up or men cheating on their wives. For you know, he could have a wife at home. You don't know this. You know what I'm saying? And if he's come to your country and cheated on his wife, he could be kicked out. There's a lot of shit behind the you, the army that you just don't know. So maybe if you was to investigate with them and go to where he was stationed at, I'm pretty sure that they will let you know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? That's what our country does. You know, our country may not be the best sometimes, but they can be the best. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not knocking the United States because I love it here, but I would really go to where he was stationed at and, and, and see if you can speak to someone in charge. You know what I'm saying? You got a pregnant belly. They want to hear from you. You you got somebody that, that came here and got me knocked up and got me in a whole world of trouble. I've seen lots of things like that on TV where women have had to have um, these men that have come from the United States to like China and Japan or wherever they were stationed at. And they had to have them investigated. They had to go back to, you know, the station or to one of the people in charge and they had to, hey, listen, um, I haven't heard from him. He he gave me this kid. I'm pregnant. or I have this kid by him. And they're like, wait a minute. You have a kid by a sergeant such and such or general such and such? They investigate that shit. So my advice to you would be to investigate his ass. And don't stress him and do you. Do not stress this motherfucker out. I never stress a motherfucker out. You have a baby. That's enough stress. Don't leave your country for no one. You're a beautiful girl. You got a beautiful baby on the way. Don't leave your homeland for somebody that's really not worth it. If you got somebody calling and saying they're pregnant, he ain't worth your time. Fuck the stories. All the stories in the world ain't going to take none of that shit the fuck back that he did. I don't give a fuck how many times he say that baby probably ain't his. Fuck him. He wouldn't have the chance to say that shit if he wouldn't fuck her in the first place. Bottom line. So on that note, divas, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. And I'll see you guys soon on a new video.